we're gonna go over the five top mistakes that I used to do when I was trying to achieve abs that just was not giving me any results. And I get messages every day asking how to get abs, what I do. And so I thought it'd be easier to just kind of go through the mistakes I made and that way you can see that if you're doing some of these things, that might be the reason why you're not seeing any results. I'm not a nutritionist. This is only like what I've experienced and how I feel like things have worked out for me and how I feel like I've seen progress in my abs. So I hope you like this video. If you do, give me a like and hit that subscribe button. And I kind of just want to go straight into it. crunches a day and if we do 300 crunches a day I'm not saying that you can't grow your abs that way because you absolutely can but I was not seeing the results that I wanted to see what I've done now changed it up and kind of treated like I want to grow any other muscle in my body so if I want to grow my arms or my legs I go through the rep range 6 to 20 and I use weights to progressively overload my muscles so that they can grow and that's what I've done now as well in my ab workouts. Today I did an ab workout and I'm going to share that with you. That will kind of give you a better picture of the kinds of workouts that I do. So the first one that I did was this weighted jackknife and I really am using and squeezing my lower abs as well as my upper abs. So it just kind of works the entire core and I just love this exercise. It's one that I use maybe two, three, four days a week. The next one that I did today was banded lemon crunches and those are just awesome as well. I just really try and focus on squeezing my abs and when I'm done with 20 reps of these my abs are absolutely dead and I always try and move further and further away from the band to push my muscles just a little bit harder each time. The last exercise I did was for my obliques and this one just really truly pushes me as well. So I just kind of wanted to share my workout with you today so that you get an idea of what I meant when I say weighted ab workouts. If you want to try out a four week program. I have one here on YouTube. I'll link it up in the corner so that you can try that out. It will work your abs four days a week. Just go slow. If you're a beginner, don't push yourself. Don't get injured. The first times just kind of feel out how your body is feeling and then slowly progress and slowly start adding the weights. Back when I was doing 300 crunches a day, I was really trying to spot reduce fat and that unfortunately is not a thing. There's two aspects to getting abs. One is building the muscle, which is what we kind of just went through using hypertrophy, using weights and, and actually seeing it like any other body part. But then there's also the visible part of it. So you need to have the abs, but they also need to be visible. So that means if you have a layer of fat on top of them, they might not be visible. And a great way to do that is using cardio and nutrition and that is what I'm gonna go into next because I haven't had my post-workout meal after my workout this morning, so I'm just gonna make that now as I'm explaining this next mistake that I used to do. protein in there because that was mistake number two which is I didn't get enough protein before. 80% of my calorie intake probably came from carbs because I had no clue on what the difference was between protein, carbs, and fat. And today I eat a really good amount of protein. I do eat carbs and I do eat fat. I'm not afraid of any of those food groups. I eat all of it, but I do make sure to get at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight, a slash half kilogram of body weight. The amount of protein you need really depends from person to person on how active you are and your weight and a lot of other factors go into that. And there's also a lot of very mixed opinions on that. But for me, this is what has worked. So if you want to grow muscle, I do believe that getting a good amount of protein will help you out. There's online calculators that can help you with that. And I am not kidding you when I tell you there's so many delicious, delicious foods that you can make. So many delicious low calorie, high protein desserts. And I have a bunch of recipes here on my YouTube channel. So I definitely suggest you go check those out. If you are trying to lose a little bit of fat as you're building muscle, you might want to be in a little bit of a caloric deficit. That is what I was when I was trying to get abs because I realized I had to lose some fat in order for my muscles to become visible. If you're wanting to build some muscle and maybe gain a little bit of muscle 
and weight, then you're going to want to be in a caloric surplus and the calculators can help you with that as well. Not to say that they're accurate. It's really important that you kind of feel out your body because everybody's different and they are not very precise, but it can give you an idea on where to start and then kind of like just adjust as you go. It's really important to remember that your nutrition does play a massive role if you want to lower your body fat and you want to gain muscle mass and you want to get abs. I used to get a little annoyed when people would tell me that 80% is your nutrition, 20% is your workout routine kind of thing. And I still don't think you can put them up against each other like that, but your nutrition Oh my God, it is so important. And if you feel like you've done everything right and you still don't see any results, then go check out my abs meal plan guide because in that guide, I guide you step by step in everything you need to know on how to get abs, how you can use your nutrition, how you can use your workouts to actually get there. I also have workout programs. If you need a little bit of help with that, you can go check that out as well. But I'm gonna eat this food now and then we're gonna go into mistake number three. I feel full and I feel clean. So let's go into the third mistake that I did when I was trying to get abs. And that really was that I wasn't feeling like I was deep down capable and worthy enough to achieve my goals. I didn't see myself as someone who was crazy fit and especially not as an athlete. And I needed to learn to see myself being capable of and worthy of those things. It's like if you want a job promotion, you need to be able to see yourself in that position and be able to handle what this job requires. And if we don't see ourselves there, we're somehow low key gonna hold ourselves back. At least that's what I believe. It's kind of like law of attraction. If we want something, we need to really truly believe that we are capable and able to be there. We actually almost have to see ourselves being there before we even are there because that makes us act and do and just do all the things that it requires to be there. So when I started to see myself as an athlete, I started taking action as an athlete. I started eating as an athlete. And that just kind of, because I saw myself as an athlete and someone who had abs, I would do all the right things that I needed. Where before, when I didn't see myself as an athlete, I would kind of hold myself back because I did not do the things that it required for me to achieve that goal. So I think what's really important is that you right now figure out what are your deep down beliefs, your core beliefs about yourself. And then if you find out that some of, the, some of those are negative or holding you back, that you break them down and then you create new beliefs for yourself. And that can be by saying these affirmations to yourself every single day so that that becomes your new beliefs about yourself. Because if you wanna achieve something we really our mind is so powerful, at least that's what I believe, and just trust me on that. Because if you somehow believe that you are not capable of doing it, or your body type just doesn't allow it, all those small little beliefs, that negative beliefs that we have about ourselves are just holding ourselves back. So if we start believing incredible things and we just know how capable we are and how worthy we are of the things we wanna achieve, Oh, it's just gonna open a whole new another world and we're gonna take action and actually achieve those things that we want in life. Let's move on to number four. I get many questions about how much cardio do I do and for how long do I run or how many times a week? And it's really, really important for me to mention that cardio is phenomenal for your mind and for your body and to get in better shape. But cardio is not necessary to gain abs as long as your nutrition is matching the overall goals that you wanna achieve. And this is a mistake that I made, is I would do so many hours of cardio every single day, I would dance. So it was all for the love that I did that. But then of course, when you do cardio, you get more hungry because you burn more calories, so you need more calories. But when you then choose to not eat the right calories, so I would eat like full, a full plate of chocolate or uh, some chips or just like things that weren't really helping me achieve my fitness goals. And so I might a lot of the time have eaten more calories in that way than I'd actually burned, even though it felt like I had burned so much more because the amount of food I would eat would be little 
um, because in one plate of chocolate there will be like 500 calories. In one massive meal with vegetables and good protein and healthy fats, there could be 500 calories. So it's all about like the volume you eat. But because I was eating the wrong things, I would actually be gaining weight because I would eat more than what I would burn in the hours I put in at the dance studio or at like cardio training. Cardio can absolutely help you achieve your fitness goals. If you burn more calories, you can eat more foods, but just be aware that if you do cardio and you then eat like chocolate bars and chocolate bars or chips or whatever, that you might actually end up eating more calories than what you're burning. So that's just super important to be aware of. And that's why I say that cardio is not necessary for you to reach your goals, but it can be a helpful tool. It's just important that you are aware of the macros, the nutrition that you're eating, that you're fueling your body with the right foods that align with the goals that you wanna achieve. The fifth and final mistake that I feel like I used to do is I would not wanna work out my legs or my arms or my back. And what I realized is once I started doing that, I feel stronger in my entire body. And also when I'm doing compound movements such as squats, deadlifts, or overhead press, I really, also engage my core, um, which obviously helps me being, build strength in my core. When I work out my entire body with the right nutrition, my body fat percentage goes down, which means my muscles get more visible because my muscle mass, overall muscle mass, grows. And as we were talking about in the beginning, spot fat reduction is not really a thing. So we want to lower that body fat percentage and we want to build muscle in our entire body and that really will help us achieve those abs. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you feel like you got an extra tip or two that you can use on your abs journey because I want you to succeed. You can do some of my workouts here on YouTube. You can always add some weights. I just create workouts that anybody can do who does not have a gym available. So if you wanna add weights to some of the non-weighted or you wanna try out my ab challenges, then go ahead and do that. I really hope that you go out and have a beautiful day and I am excited to see you again very soon. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button because it really helps me out. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.